Hello everyone and welcome to this episode here on NRV Outdoors. Today we're here at the creek to release one of the biggest and best kept trout secrets in the last decade, if not longer. And guys, I know there's going to be a lot of people that's mad about me releasing this secret, but if there's anything that I can share with the community to help them catch more trout, I am more than willing to do so. So in this little container here guys, we have what is known to believe and most likely is the very best live bait for trout fishing that your money can buy anywhere. In this container here are some small larvas and they are called butterworms, as you can see there. Just a gorgeous little larva there. This particular larva is a larva that's found only in Chile. Over there they call this the, the tabo worm or the travao worm and it is an extremely hard to get little worm that lives and eats only one particular type of plant and it lives its entire life eating that one plant and then it turns into the Chilean moth or the Chilean moth. A super awesome looking little moth. But nonetheless, these are oftenly sold as amphibian and reptile food for like your iguanas and geckos and whatnot. But in the last, I'd say 10 years or so, trout fishermen have picked this up from a lot of fishermen down in South America that this is an absolute creek fishing machine. And by far, and in my opinion, and in a lot of other people's opinion, the best bait money can buy for trout fishing in the entire world. So today, guys, all we want to do is fish around, introduce you guys to the butterworm, and see how many fish we can catch. All right, guys, in today's video, we've got the mock pearl combo here, and we've got our trout magnet rig. As you guys know on the channel, I love to fish the trout magnet rig. And this particular little butterworm is just perfect on a trout magnet rig. So we're just going to reach in here. We're going to grab this one out. Try to find us a nice fat one to start off with. That guy right there looks just perfect for the job. These are silk creating worms. As you can see there, they uh, produce silk as they're stored. So they're a silkworm, if you will. But all you want to do is just simply take your trout magnet hook. I do recommend using gold because as you can see, it perfectly matches your worm here. And just start just below the head there, right around the collar and run the hook all the way down. The skin on these little guys here is very tough and it does hold a hook extremely well and slowly releases the, uh, the moisture that's inside of these little worms. And it's a very effective trout bait. So all you do is just run them up on your trout magnet hook just like that. Or maybe your number eight J hook or circle hook would work fine too with a split shot. And then we just got our float up there as an indicator. And all you wanna do is cast this thing out, allow it to get down there near the bottom, bounce along, and the trout cannot stand it. So without any further ado, guys, let's go ahead and get in here and let's, ex let's just go ahead and show you guys the power and the secret that's been well kept for most of you guys of the butterworm. There he is. Oh, he took the bobber down. He sure did. Let's cast three or four with this butterworm. On our very first cast, we got a bite and he popped off. Oh, jumper. And uh, we made a few casts with a little bit larger worm. They let it drift by a couple times, but this little guy absolutely had to have it. There he is. An absolute gorgeous little rainbow trout here. Not quite as big as that first one we had hooked. But he had to have that butterworm. It's just a deadly, deadly little bait when you can get it. Let's let this little beauty take off right here. All right. An absolute gorgeous little fish on the butterworm. Let's go ahead and grab us another one out of here. We'll go ahead and grab this little bitty teeny tiny one here. And we'll rig him up because our last worm still got a chunk on our hook here. And with the price of these things, it's best to use whatever you've got. So we'll just rig him up just like this. We'll cast him out there. There he is. Oh, that is a big one. That is a nice one right there. Big, long brown trout. Put it right in the group of fish there and that little piece of butterworm and then that small one, he could not pass it. It was all tattered from that last strike. It fish did not mind one bit. There we go. Wow. I'm telling you, there's really not many baits on the market today 
that you can safely say every bait will catch you a fish but this is this really is one of those baits guys it is just so phenomenally effective that you can almost say without a doubt that if there's a fish around it will eat it so this guy going right here there he goes got my feet wet as he left an absolute gorgeous fish and as you can see still got a couple little pieces on here so just out of example i'm just going to try to rig this up here the best i can to cover the hook and we're going to cast this little bitty piece around just to show you guys just how crazy effective this thing can be so let's just cast it in here we'll let it drift on by these fish and we'll just see if somebody's willing to immediately eat that thing definitely getting some strikes on it we got him on all the way down there what have we got here this does not this is not a trout and that will happen good thing it was only on a couple pieces we got a big old fat creek chub here and they do like the butterworms as well and i would i would suggest to you guys that if you want to be around these little beauties here make sure that you chum them to the side with some corn or do what you can to cast away from them because you definitely don't want to waste uh, you know 50 cent to a dollar worm on an old stinky creek chub unless you're into catching those small micro fish and if so well then that would be totally okay well, let's just go ahead and rig us up another one here this is worm number three and so far we've caught two fish so we're doing quite well there just rig him up just like that we're going to do the same thing we're just going to cast this entire butter worm right into this group of fish right here and i expect them to react to it pretty quickly it's an entire worm since releasing like crazy out of it i imagine these fish will be hard pressed to let it pass by there we go another nice one big angry fish here absolutely crushed that butter worm looks like we've got another brown rain's picking up a little bit which isn't really affecting the bite it doesn't appear but if the screen gets wet i do apologize for that there we go another gorgeous fish on the butter worm a big hook jawed male and as you guys know if you answered our trivia question that would be called a kite and yes they are starting to breed at least would appear because they're all hooking up really nicely with that jaw there let's just let that beauty take off right there there we go and once again just drifting that butter worm nice and slow through there and they absolutely have to have it come on big girl get it got her oh i asked her to get it and she did yes she did seen her moving on over there beautiful brown trout here on that big gorgeous butter worm there we go slid her right into the net an absolute gorgeous brown trout here absolutely stunning looks like a little male nice big fish though he's one of the better ones in this pool here seen him sliding over and i figured that if it laid eyes on that butter worm it was going to have it take off there it goes snaked its way right on out of the net there it looks like our butter worm took a bit of a beating but i'll tell you what let's cast him back out there and let's see if we can get us another one on him we might as well right like I was saying earlier, guys, these butterworms can only be found on the Trevo plant, or as it's pronounced there in Chile, the Trevo plant. And uh, over there, these are actually more well known as the Trevo worm. And they're only found on that particular plant because that's actually all that they eat. They literally live their entire lives feasting on this one plant and its leaves until they're mature enough to begin to cocoon and turn into the moth, into the Chilean moth, a very gorgeous colored brown moth awesome fall patterns a gorgeous gorgeous little creature but um they live their entire lives like i was saying just eating on the trevo plant and getting big and fat and what ended up happening is a whole lot of people figured out that they were so full of awesome vitamins and minerals 
that they were just perfect food for their amphibians, their iguanas, lizards, frogs, and whatnot. And they had a gorgeous color to them, and that color was very attractive. There's one. Oh, got that one. Beautiful rainbow here. But as you can see here, guys, they're not only super effective with your guanas and your frogs and whatnot, but trout absolutely love them. And that's why we're here today to share this secret with you guys so that you can order some of these for yourself and catch fish that nobody else can catch. Because this bait is so natural, so juicy and lifelike that these gorgeous mountain trout cannot help it. So let's get this little beauty unpinned here. Release that gorgeous little rainbow right back into the creek. Heck yeah. And as you can see, the, uh, the skin on these particular worms are very strong. And this bait is actually still on the hook here. So we're going to go on ahead and try to catch fish number three on this one worm. Now I would like to mention to you guys that they are pretty highly expensive. Each worm will range you between 50 cents and a dollar per worm. Plus you have to order them and wait for them to get there. But once you obtain them, they catch fish just like this. I mean, one after the other. And you can keep them in your fridge for quite the long time. So that's three fish on one little butter worm. Gosh, that is just, I'm telling you guys, they are just an outstanding little bait. I've never quite experienced anything like them. Uh -oh, broke our line, we're catching so many fish, but that's okay. We'll get our hook out of this guy. We'll get him on his way. There we go. Another gorgeous brown trout there. And that's three fish in a row on one worm. And all I had to do was re-rig it. The scent and the look of those worms, guys, are so deadly, it's not even funny. But let's get re-rigged up, and we'll check our line. We'll try to get us another one. But what ended up happening is down in South America, a lot of people started using these Chilean grubs as fishing bait, and they were absolutely slaying fish on them. So a lot of Americans started to take notion of that and started experimenting with them here in the United States and found that they are extremely effective in creeks and rivers for not only trout, but also steelhead and salmon. It's just something about the scent and the look of the particular worm that the trout and the salmonoid type fish absolutely love and simply can't stand. So within, within the last decade or so, it's become an extremely well-kept secret. People will be using butterworms and physically hiding them from other fishermen, trying to make sure that they didn't actually see what they were using. So that's why I figured today I would be the first person on YouTube to go ahead and come out and openly say that the butterworms is not only an excellent bait for trout fishing, but it is probably the best bait that you can buy that's alive and can be stored in your refrigerator that your money can possibly buy. Although it's a bit of a wait to get it, and they are imported, and you gotta wait on shipping, and they cost quite a bit, almost a dollar a worm. Once you possess them, you're catching trout better than any of your friends, and trust me when I say, bragging rights has no cost, especially when you're around a bunch of your close buddies. Sorry about the background noise. We got a bit of a caretaker taking care of the property here, doing a bit of lawn mowing. I know that's quite annoying, so we'll probably just skip to the catches. Just like this one. There we go. Gorgeous rainbow trout here. Little bitty guy. Absolutely crushed that butterworm. Go ahead and swing this little beauty here right on into the net. Oh, there we go. Oh, she kicked off our butterworm into the creek. You little stinker. I was going to try to catch another one on that one. But the butterworms are quite interesting. They actually get into a bit of a larva state and they wrap themselves in silk while they're in the container. And the longer they sit in that little silk cocoon, the kind of the softer they get and the brighter yellow they get. So that little guy there had a soft one and threw it off, but that's okay. Because as I was saying earlier, each butterworm about equals one fish. So let's go ahead and get another one on here and let's get back in here. There's another one, gorgeous little brown trout there. Had to have that old butterworm, he could not stand it. There we go. Gorgeous fish. It's a brown. Let's let him go here. Get him unpegged. There we go. We'll let this little beauty just take off right here at our feet. There he goes. Heck yeah. Got him on. 
just hanging out there in the current. This little beauty here had to have it. Another gorgeous little rainbow trout here. Bait was sitting there completely motionless. And I was actually just kind of staring off watching this gentleman mow grass over here and thinking that all of that grass he was blowing into the creek here is probably going to start a feeding frenzy. And it would appear that that could be the case because this fish bit almost immediately once that grass started flowing across the creek here. Let's let this little beauty take right on off out of the net here. There she goes like a rocket. Got a nice fish that just moved in right up here in front of us. Can see him through our polarized lenses. Oh, he bit right as I was giving slack. Oh my gosh. Mm. He, I don't think he's going to bite it again because he didn't fall, turn around and chase it. Don't know if y'all caught that, but that bobber did twitch twice right there. Got us a nice yellow one on, and I'm thinking that this one potentially is a brown, so we've got the perfect color. Now we've just got to get it right in front of him there. There we go. There we go. That's a nice fish. An angry fish, too. Another gorgeous, gorgeous rainbow trout here. Extremely furious. He's got our little butter worm right in the corner of the mouth there. There we go. Got that little beauty in the net. Calm down. We're going to get you off. Looks like someone else has also hooked this fish. So once again, guys, that's kind of just a demonstration of the power of the butterworm. This poor little rainbow here has been caught, hooked deeply, and he's still feeding, mainly because he's seen that old butterworm. So let's let this little beauty go right here. Take off. There she goes. Right back in there for somebody else to catch. She did kick off our butterworm. It was one of those big fat yellow ones, and they are a bit soft. Let's go ahead and get another one rigged up. We'll see if we can get us another one. But so far, guys, we have been catching fish one after the other. It's been nonstop action, and that is 100% and solely because of these guys right here. I mean, there's no question about it. These baits right here are the best live bait that your money can buy. Let's go ahead and get us another one, guys. Let's get it rigged up. Had some small kids come by with their father. And he was watching me catch some fish there from the road. Come down and ask me what I was using and mentioned that him and his children had had a rough day fishing so far. So I gave them all a couple butterworms each. They all made some casts in here. And everybody got to catch a fish before they left. And I made sure of that. Because anytime you can get a new angler, especially a kid, on a fish, it's something that they won't forget and they'll want to come do again. Oh, bite it. Bite. Oh. oh, gosh, missed him. Oh, and it looks like we lost the last little bit of our butterworm, guys. Well, we're out of bait, so that's pretty much going to do it. Get out if you can, guys, and do some fishing this summer. And enjoy what little bit of summer you've got left because fall's coming quick, and so is them old, cold days. But get out if you can and do some fishing. And make sure that if you get the opportunity to take a child fishing, you take that opportunity and you seize it. You take them out and you show them the experience that they can have out on the water and how much fun and rewarding it can be. But go ahead, guys, and get out and do some fishing and have some fun. And until next time, be safe and tight lines.